All right, everyone, welcome back to part 10. Can you actually believe we got to part 10? Uh, thank you very much for um, really being here uh, to this uh, milestone of the channel. This is the 10th part of our series. And uh, when you think I thought that we're going to probably uh, end up at mostly two videos and then give up. But here we are. We didn't do that. And uh, actually, uh, apparently we're growing as a channel. And I am so happy so and so thankful. Uh, and if you did click to this video, uh, first of all, let me thank you very much for doing that. And uh, if you would like so, please subscribe, uh, leave a like, and uh, maybe a comment to what you would like to see. So, uh, let's get to it. Uh, what we will do in this video? Well, first, uh, I will open the references. Okay, um, so one thing I wanted to do, really, is to uh, make our um, rim, uh, it's what we call it, a little more uh, interesting, right? Because, I mean, yeah looks pretty cool but we can do even better and uh, let's go to edit mode go to x-ray select only the down part vertices and then e uh let's go on that uh kind of about here should be good g and x to continue kind of like this let's continue you know geometry and then um, probably would want to also continue with the inclination of uh, our model and uh, you know deselect x-ray uh, select these faces in front of the train extrude them on X so if you extrude them on the normal, you saw what happens. It's not going to work properly for us, at least for what we try to do. Maybe if you try to, you know, um, have this zone inclined, could work for you. Um, and yeah, I mean, I guess you actually should try. See if it works and if it looks good. Uh, again, big thing... Um, that I keep on uh, saying. Um, you gotta try. You gotta try stuff. Uh, that's kind of the only way you're going to ever learn how to use uh, really any program. I mean, yeah, we're talking about Blender here, but uh, it's not the only one that does this. All of them are basically uh, the same. So, you know, uh, take this with a grain of salt. If you don't like it but I think you should uh, take care of that so I don't really like how that ended up um, and I don't really know what I would like it to look like right because um, I'm trying to think of it and uh, I do want it to round up a little bit but I think we need a little more geometry like five edges maybe and I think this is the exact number um, and so, let's go to vertex mode, x-ray mode, select the middle one. And uh, then let's try to maybe use... Oh, I uh, deactivate, sorry. Uh, the inverse square could probably do a little better. And uh, here's a problem, but we already know how to solve it. Let's hide everything that's, you know, uh, on the higher side and then... Uh, we can just concentrate on uh, the geometry we want to concentrate on. So, uh, yeah, not this, of course, because we don't want, actually, you know what, not any of that, just this one. The less, the better. And we will want it to be maybe like this, could work. Alt H because we will need to see it now, and let me see what we got. Uh, with one, and I don't like it. 
don't like it whatsoever. And I think it's because of the, the inverse square. Because uh, it's not what we look for. Sharp is definitely not what we look for. It did help us, but not in this case. Root, no, smooth. I think smooth is the one. And it does kind of seem that way, but it's probably going to need a little bit of, you know, playing around with. And maybe this. I believe in this one. Hmm? You know what? I uh, I dig it, and it's of course not the only thing we're going to do, but uh, we're taking it easy. So what we want to do now is Control Three. Actually, um, first let's go back to Extreme mode again. Hide everything that's upwards, and uh, let's do this. So uh, actually, I wanted to talk a little bit before uh, I getting a little more into this. Uh, at this point, I think we're um, more into the intermediate part of uh, the tutorial, of the modeling part at least, right? Because, uh, you know, the the rest of them are not yet done, so I can't really say we're on the intermediate part for them. Um, and there's a reason, really, I say this, and that is because um, we learned to do quite a lot. I mean, uh, you know, learning how to uh, model with uh, uh, the vertices, learning how to extrude and insert faces, and then basically creating little details like that um, using subsurface modifier in our advantage. Uh, I think it's just a little more than just, uh, you know, basic uh, beginner stuff. So uh, you should really, really feel proud of yourself if you got so far, because usually people, uh, well, you know, I'm not an experienced YouTuber, let's say, because uh, this is, again, my, uh, I think it's my 13th video in total, but <laughs> two of them are uh, like, what, less than a minute long. So there's that. Um, what I was trying to say, though, is uh, this is really a very important thing. Like, if you stuck around for this much, you know what? I do think you're going to like Blender because, uh, unfortunately, you know, Blender has a point. I mean, uh, really anything like this has a point where it becomes a little annoying or a little, like, repetitive. But, I, you know what? That repetition is what makes uh, anything great, really. Because that repetition itself is uh, how you become better at that said thing. So um, before we talk some more, let's look at our reference, see what else we can do. I want to talk today, actually, also about a new add-on that comes with Blender. So first of all, it's free. Second of all, we don't have to download anything. Um, but before we do any of that, uh, let me think. I do want to do the, I think, uh, these are supposed um, to help the train when it stops, to absorb like the, the shock, to, you know, not let the train actually touch the, um, uh, whatever they're called, the stopping train device protection stuff. Um, so that. And... Uh, yeah, I was also, uh, of, uh, we will also do the protection uh, downwards, so um, uh, the coolest part, probably. And I was really thinking about this part, that I talked in the last video that I don't really like Big This Empty, and uh, say to think about it, I actually realized, so here's the deal. So for everyone that wants to not leave it like this, right, uh, You what you can do, is um, you either uh, go control three uh, and go X-ray mode, vertex mode, and if you ask me, what you should do is uh, take this vertex right here. Um, I would recommend hiding everything else, by the way, uh, because I think everything will be a hindrance in uh, instead of this one. So doing this again, we will 
proportionally edit and you will want to not use oh sorry not the compositing yet we're not there uh, maybe the inverse square no uh sphere no and it's sphere uh sharp no sharp is the one it's always the one apparently uh so yeah you could do something like this of course which uh you know it works more or less uh, and i'll show you exactly what i'm talking about so uh this out and just you know edit some more and this is not gonna look bad this is actually going to look okay and you know then you can play around with it actually make the train uh get any uh you know touched by this like intersected and uh, all that uh you do get this uh and that's because uh you uh i mean we just you know did it on uh the z axis like all every, all the edits are only in the z axis but i mean it's not that hard to to fix this um and you know uh so this is how you kind of fix it you just uh you know move the vertices on the x-axis until they're actually more or less back where they're supposed to be um there's a reason i'm not uh you know really thinking too much about this one because i don't really want to stick with this version uh i did have this uh version i think in my original uh train that you always see in the thumbnail as well so get these up as well and as you can see, there's still some shading here happening. Some uh, really weird uh, shading. And that's because uh, what happened was, uh, I think really this one needs to be a little more in front. Because right now it's kind of a very weird geometry here. See what I'm saying? uh also yeah you we could add some geometry in there and uh just try to fix it with that oh no and it's also again getting tricked by the same things uh if i'm not mistaken and i might be mistaken oh yeah i'm mistaken because we didn't move this uh so no we don't want i'm undoing all of it I go back, uh, extreme mode still stays on. I don't know why I didn't leave it. And uh, proportional editing should be on. Right, and I mean, if we do this, it's gonna be horrible, but we could just hide this and keep this one to basically uh, move along with our ideas right and gg for this to basically be here and let's actually sz0 for this one alt h and let's see how it looks now again it's gonna create this and uh, the big reason is because this and uh, these vertices basically are not uh at the same um x level let's call it right so really we need to kind of play around with them and um well this is gonna be something like this There is still some shading there, which I uh, am not in love with. All right, so uh, the way we can all do it and we can move together. Um, I was almost going to get a high school musical thing there, wasn't I? So we select the middle one here, the proportional editing, so uh, the middle vertices, then the proportional editing with an inverse square then gz and we're going to basically round this up just like this 
Now taking these vertices, we're going to GG with them and get them um, up here. Then they uh, first uh, let's take the proportional editing out. Uh, I think we should change that with these to get them up here, right? So that should do this intersect a little bit, but you know it's actually fine. And GY for this, uh, actually, no, we're good. I'm going to make this a little thicker here and here. And it's going to look something like this. Uh, let's Alt H. Um, and yes, they're going to be a little shading still here. But uh, once we actually uh, go to one X-ray modifier, select these two GNX, and let's try to put them uh, you know, kind of as well as possible. Uh, something like this, actually. I don't know why I stopped there. Something like this. All right. Uh, as you can see, almost everything is perfect. Uh, there's this one uh, little shading issue, but uh, actually you won't see it. And uh, adding some more geometry will help uh, if that's the case. Uh, also, uh, another thing I did notice while doing this, right, uh, there's a face here that we uh, had and actually I thought it looked really interesting and even this looks pretty interesting. I'm going to probably uh, do something like this because I like it. But again, this is not uh, the way I'm going to go on with um, the model. And uh, the reason for it is because something else caught my eye. And uh, that was something from the Hogwarts train. And it's these. These cylinders right here kind of caught my eye. And uh, I wanted them. But I didn't want them just like they had it. So I had another idea when I saw this opening. Um, I was like, hey, I think I found an opening. And uh, besides my very bad joke, uh, there was also an actual plan. So let's control R to have uh, this uh, new loop. We don't actually need the loop, but you'll see why I did it. Uh, select this vertex, shift S, and then cursor to select it. And uh, that's mostly why I had it there. So you even can take it out just to, you know, uh, simplify the geometry a little bit. Good. Now having this, we're going to introduce a mesh, and that's going to, of course, be a cylinder. Uh, in case you're thinking, but why didn't uh, didn't we kept using curves? Uh, we're going to actually use curves a little later on again, um, on the lower side, uh, because curves are going to be perfect. Uh, basically, tubes. We're going to use them as tubes uh, to create something like again. Uh, I saw it in the reference, actually in our background reference, uh, and we're going to create like this pipe stuff, you know, and uh, this is kind of mine, but um, I don't know what this is, but I kind of like it. Uh, we're going to also create, oh, uh, also uh, these kind of pipes I would like in the front a little bit, uh, which this kind of represents something similar. Um, but what I wanted was some uh, cables, right? So we could have some hanging cables around here. And I'm going to show you how we can do this ourselves. But also, I'm going to introduce you to an add-on that does that. It's um, That one we will have to uh, download, uh, but it's uh, free. So, you know, there's that. Um, I'm talking a lot about what we will do next but not doing this. So let us stop doing that. Actually, let me stop doing that. And uh, let's actually model what we came here to model, right? Uh, actually, G and uh, Y, Y to have it like kind of around here should be perfect. Then S, Z, Z and G, Z, Z and uh, this is kind of exactly what, I like it a lot. I really like this a lot. And uh, S, 
uh, shift Z Z and uh, let's just make it a little thicker right something kind of about there yeah I you uh, I think it works and uh, shade it smooth honestly this almost doesn't need any bevel because you won't see uh you won't see anything and uh, yeah <laughs> um so we have this perfect let's apply all transforms because again uh we should uh i mean before we do anything important like rendering or animating or whatever uh we are going to check uh just to make sure we did not forget to you know um create some uh, uh forget to apply the scale sorry and uh to uh create some problems in the future this is what i wanted to say uh right <clears throat> doing this perfect and now let's mirror it about because we love symmetry uh and uh, you actually should really think about that joke aside uh when you do some technical uh object or uh you know uh, something that uh, it's like a machinery usually symmetry uh kind of works because in machineries we as humans uh like symmetry a lot so that's what happens so we do the mirror uh we select the main cylinder to mirror about and uh, this is what we get and i do really love the look i think it looks pretty interesting and we will call this frontal uh, cylinder a lot of cylinders in this one we actually did not name the others we should uh, do this probably I'm gonna do this off camera um, piece of advice uh, try to be um, uh, to try to name your objects try to be you know as organized as possible because otherwise you will lose stuff in blender and you don't want that uh, and actually again I really loved that idea that I did earlier by mistake and uh, I'm keeping that. Okay, mistake or not, I think that looked great. And I think it added, you know, just a little bit of uh, interest. We're going to do something like this as a zero to kind of make it look, you know, a little equal. And actually, we could. That might have ideas now. We could uh, get him in front like that. Right, let's uh, actually pull it back just a little bit. And uh, you know what, maybe even shear a little, but a little like this, not too crazy. And there's a reason for it. We're going to do something like uh, these, uh, these, uh, not lamps, uh, more like, uh, what are they called? Um, headlights. I don't know what was wrong with me. I was lacking that part of the vocabulary for some reason. And uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I do lack a part of the vocabulary when I need to say anything that is a synonym to basically or really. Uh, it almost seems as if it's the only two uh, English words I do know. Which maybe is the truth, I don't know. Maybe the rest of it is actually AI. Who knows anymore, right? Uh, good. And doing this is uh, gonna look like this. Which uh, I'm not too keen on actually because it's not on the same uh, direction with the others. I think I should have just left it as it was. Yeah. And there's a reason because we're not gonna keep it like this. And you'll see why. Now it's time to introduce you to the next add-on that I did not show you before. Right? Uh, that add-on is gonna be called... And I don't want to make a mistake here, right? Uh, let's go into edit mode, select this face, and it's going to be hoop tools. I was uh, kind of sure, but I didn't want to mess it up. So, uh, go into edit, preferences, and uh, write loop tools. Uh, loop is going to be enough. Select, uh, fix the box, and get the loop tools in there. And what that is going to bring us, right? It's going to be this, uh, actually two menus. Uh, first, uh, it's going to be the one I saw, showed you. So if you press, oh, I didn't have the, uh, that's embarrassing actually. 
So the screencast was not on. Unfortunately, apparently it's uh, always... Okay, now it works. Um, it's not always getting on, um, so I sometimes forget about it. Uh, so sorry for that. So uh, what I wanted to say, right? Uh, if we go into edit mode uh, and press right click, we have the loop tools right here, right? The one I showed you. And it comes with some new functions. Uh, functions we're going to talk about. I'm not going to talk about all of them because, uh, to be perfectly honest with you, I did not use all of them. I used bridge and uh, circle kind of the most. Uh, flatten is also a really interesting and actually useful um, function. So basically, um, uh, oh, flatten and relax, right. Uh, I also use. Uh, so basically, uh, flatten will do kind of what it says. You know, if you have like, uh, uh, let's actually, let me uh, show you because it's way easier than actually explaining uh, this one. <clears throat> so uh, let's uh, show you one more function, which it, it comes automatically with Blender. So if you are in edit mode, and uh, you select everything. Uh, subdivide uh, would let you, you know, just subdivide your body on how many times you want. And uh, you don't have to do this. You don't have to follow this one. Uh, it's just me doing it. Uh, so if we have these selected and uh, press flatten, it will uh, basically do the SZ0, bring all of them to the same level um uh, that you put them at so for example if we select these four faces and uh, press flatten they are brought to the same level it's actually a pretty good function and uh, it makes it quicker to be perfectly honest i got used to the sx0 s0 thing and that's why i keep it um what the uh, relax one does uh, I don't think actually it can show it to you right here, but I'm going to try it anyways. Um, I didn't try it in a in such a context, so uh, relax. Uh, it did work in a way, uh, but not in the good way. So what relax does basically is uh, trying to smooth the surface. Right, so if you have a surface that has some curves or some uh, shading issues or whatever, it might be because your edges are closer together or they have, you know, weird shapes because of your geometry. What Relax does is trying to basically separate it in a, a constant way, in a way so that it basically makes the surface smoother. Um, and it's really handy. Uh, Usually I've seen it used and that's also where I kind of use it when you create characters and you uh, will remesh it and that's when you kind of try to relax the edges a little bit to create a better mesh. Uh, good. Now, um, talking about all this, let us go to this face. So I showed you the edit one and if you go to edit again, uh, so when you are out, you have the bool tool uh, option, which by the way is also an add-on. So if you're right here on the preferences, add-ons, bool tool, you get this. Now what bool tool is, is a really good thing for anyone that wants to do mainly hard surface uh, modeling or just wants to ease their way into hard surface modeling. The reason for it really is uh, just like the auto mirror, it's going to really make a lot of things easier for you. So uh, basically, Bull Tool will have... Uh, it's a modifier we didn't talk about yet. I'm going to do it. But uh, just so you know, there's a Boolean modifier that basically has these exact functions, right? Um, and uh, you'll see kind of what it does. Basically, it uh, it's able to uh, get, you know, a body and... Uh, Actually, again, showing better than talking. So uh, let's get on with that one. So if we have a cube right here, let's make it a little smaller. Um, and uh, 
you know have the difference nothing looks like it's happening because you know it's actually not happening because i did it wrong so uh sorry you have to select uh, both of them and uh you press difference and that's the difference between them and there's a reason because this is the active object if you select this one first and then the plane and press difference it's going to show you uh basically it's the plane and it Subtra subtracts the cube out of it or the geometry of the cube on top of the plane right so uh, that's one of the functions you can also do the, so the cube and the plane and then you know intersect them it's going to show only the part that intersects and so on and so forth you know the union will basically show both of them uh, like where the geometry unites and put it together which is actually really cool uh, but yeah so this is what it kind of does. Um, we're going to talk a little more in detail when we get to the Boolean modifier. It's going to be in one of the next episodes, actually. Um, but for now, what we want to do is make this, just like our headlights here, a circle. Circular, right? We could uh, add, a, you know, like another cylinder here, make another geometry. And that's cool as well. But I just want to make this uh, for you guys to kind of see how it is, how it is used. So first of all, uh, let's try to use this from uh, our geometry as it is right now. So if you go to loop tools, press circle, because this is what we want, you know. So move the selected vertices to a circle shape. This is what this function does, right? And this is what it's doing, basically. Um, because it doesn't have enough geometry to work with. So we want a circle, but it has only four vertices to do it. So it does the best it can. So it rotates the vertices to get our circle, which doesn't work for us. So uh, what we do want is to actually subdivide this face. So selecting only this face. Uh, let's turn off the proportional editing. Uh, let's subdivide it once. And let's try to do it again. Select only the vertex in the center and then circle it. And it actually works, more or less. Again, not perfect. And that's because uh, what it tries to do is uh, from the vertex we selected, it's going to take everything, all, all the vertices around it and create a circle with it, which again, works pretty well. And uh, for example, we could play with the angle so uh, we could, I don't know, go something like this, so 10 degrees, and it actually works pretty pretty nicely. Select these faces and, you know, get them uh, to a pretty okay state, but this will <laughs> look horrible. Uh, and we don't want that. We don't want to affect all that geometry around it. So what shall we do? Well, simple. We we'll select all these faces and we subdivide again. And that is because now we have more geometry to work with. Going back into vertex select mode, we will press on this vertex in the middle and circle. And it messes up completely. Um, and again, because it is trying to uh, basically take everything it's just not gonna help so let's select only these oh, sorry like that better and now the circle is better right so the reason he did that again with this uh the geometry all around here will try to create a circle which we don't want because it's gonna destroy everything but if we select only this thing we could either subdivide it one more time and try to do a circle only out of this thing and it's actually going to look a little better but we don't need that i think it looked okay with just this geometry only we will need it to get down and look at this we still have this geometry on but we do have our well-deserved and uh well thought circle and uh that's actually quite quite great so <clears throat> uh, having this again um, you know if we want this straight we actually can move this a little bit in here to have it straight and this one 
the same and uh, so on and so forth and uh, we can select our circle let's go to one because I think there's something happening I don't know if it's just me no it is uh, so what happens is uh, this is a little rotated so we want SX uh, zero so we want it to be flattened and then we will shear ourselves so look how useful the shear function actually really is so we'll bring it kind of about to our like our uh, geometry around there right looks super nice is there something there because it looks like there is uh, let me go into x-ray mode I cannot see any problem I think it was just a a bug or just a visual something there anyway having this <clears throat> we, we don't really care if it's perfectly on the surface and there's a reason for it because we will extrude it anyway on the X right and we will do this it's not it doesn't have to go too far right and uh, we will uh, scale it up and look at this I think this actually looks really great honestly uh, I think it's yeah it's shaded smooth and um, I think what we will want really will be a little more geometry uh, in there so for that to be done select all these and then let's subdivide it once uh, this is what subdivision were uh, subdivision is well you know, subdivision, surface, subdivision. I think it kind of, you know, goes uh, without saying what it does. Uh, but we uh, don't really need that apparently. What we could use, and I think everyone realized this by now, is a subdivision modifier. Um, but I'll be perfectly honest with you, I don't really want it. Because with the bevel modifier also, it's not going to look great. And if we do it like this, we'll have to stay and edit everything. And I don't think there's a real good reason for it. Because I actually like how this looks like this. But what we will want to do... Uh, sorry, Control 3. Uh, is to select these faces, insert all of them together, and uh, extrude them on the X just a little bit. And then and scale them down a little bit again and it looks even better now and we're going to actually do a little tricky thing with it later on when the materials will come in you will learn a, a pretty cool thing about the material list or something like that. so even with bevel uh, you know putting us uh, uh, you know support edge will help a little bit because bevel will uh, try to manage the beveling of the edges uh, in accordance to the um, distance between the edges. Good. Having this, I'm actually super happy with how the train looks. I think it's a very interesting look. Uh, Alright, we'll end this video right there. Um, I think it's a pretty good uh, wrap up. We finished with the rim more or less uh we will add one or two little uh, things um in the future but this is going to be you know uh after we finish with the whole 3d model so at after we have all the model we not want uh right which is the main cabin and one other wagon or uh, cabin i don't know what to call it uh we will um uh, you know uh, look on the very small details and uh, add them and uh, have them, you know, kind of um, have a little more interesting look. So, uh, I think this is a good uh, way for you to understand how uh, the bull tool add-on works and uh, really how to use, again, proportional editing to a little of a more... Um, intermediate to pro level i think i think this is a good example on how you really should use it um and one thing i would love you guys to try is uh try to find your own uh model try to find your own way to model and to kind of 
you know, find your own um, style, I would say. I think uh, that's a good way of putting it and a good thing for you because you would both train yourself and also, uh, you know, find out what you like in Blender. Um, so I'm already talking way too much in this outro. Uh, thank you so much for um, staying here, watching this video till now. I really appreciate it. Uh, you, if you stayed all uh, throughout this video, if not, even if you press on the video again, I uh, super appreciate it. Um, and uh, yeah, that's kind of it for this video. Uh, please uh, leave a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you didn't do so yet. Uh, I'm going to post way more content and uh, do way more interesting stuff. Uh, and also leave a comment uh, if you have any suggestions or uh, maybe just if you want to say hello or whatever. I promise I will answer. Uh, other than that, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's it. I wish you guys have uh, an amazing day and an amazing uh weekend because i'm going to post this on friday right yeah so yeah have an amazing weekend i hope you had a great week and uh we'll have an even greater weekend because more videos are about to show up so uh thank you again for watching and uh have a great one bye guys